Greetings and welcome to a new video about Square Wave Inverter. In this example, we'll look at the RL load. So we have now a series combination of resistors and inductors. We will see the step-by-step -step calculations and also verify these in MATLAB Simulink simulations. So this is the circuit. We have discussed this in the previous example. We see here the DC voltage source. We have again four switches. S1 and S2 are on and off on the same time. And we have also S3 and S4 will be on and off at the same time. We again see the load current and also the load voltage and we also have here the source current but we also have in addition the current through the switches when they are on. And these are the waveforms, we have seen also this, so this is the load voltage, so it will be positive VDC when the S1 and S2 are closed and it will be negative VDC when the S3 and S4 are closed. And this is now the shape of the load current, so it is different than the resistive load because due to that resistive inductive uh, series connection we have a charging up and discharging of the load current so this is the shape we will now have and this is only valid for steady state analysis you see also the current for the switches s1 and s2 and also for s3 and s4 and when you add the curves for these two we will get the source current expression or source current uh, plot here which is for this pink one so let's go now to the calculations step by step First one is load current expression. We have two parts. We have this. This is only valid for the half of the period, the first half, and the second one is for the second half of the period. Well, but this is again only for steady state. The expression for IO minimum and IO maximum, that is unknown, but also the tau was unknown and also the capital T we need to calculate. So, so we, ne we need to know the tau and also the capital letter T. So T is the switching period, which is one over the switching frequency. So that will be then one over 60 Hertz. 60 seconds I must say. The tau is L over R so that will be then 2.5 milliseconds. Now we now have the sufficient information and that will give us 9.31 amps for IO maximum which is the minus of the IO minimum. And then we have the sufficient information to substitute the values in here for the first part and the second part of the equation and when you simplify this further you get now these two equations for these two ranges. Okay, this is now sufficient information to move on to question B because there we need the RMS load current. For that we need to have the expression, mathematical expression for our load current and we have that. And this is now the general expression for the RMS. We have here the square root of the 1 over the period and then integrated from 0 to the t, so the complete period and then the expression squared. But we know that it must be also divided in two parts because it has different uh, expressions. So the first half will be then this and the second half will be then this one and then taking all together one over the, the period. But we know that this is the same shape as that one that can be also seen here because this is a load current. So you can take the first part and then actually divide the period and then have the integrate the result for the integration the exact same. So that will be then much easier and faster. So we have then 1 over, not 1 over uh, t, but 1 over t over 2. And you also integrate from 0 to uh, t over 2. So this part we don't take into account. And that is exactly the same result. We only need to change the, uh, the scaling here. And then you take only the part here for this formula. So you take actually this part. And since 1 over t over 2 will be then 120, and this will be then integrated from 0 to 100, 1 over 120 uh, seconds. And that will give you now, again, quantity squared will give you 6.643 amps. That is the RMS load current. RMS load voltage is uh, pretty straightforward. That is also using the formula for the RMS value. But we know VO squared is uh, also given by the expression for the VO, which is in the first half of the period VDC and the second half of the period is minus VDC so it is plus 100 or minus 100 and that's shown here and when you do the calculation here in the similar form you get directly 100 volts now let's bring the values we just determined here and now go to the just observe low power now for that we can use this formula in this case it is mandatory that you use the load uh, current RMS value and not the load voltage RMS because we need to look only at the resistor so we need to use this formula and it will give us 6.643 squared times 10 that will give you 441 watts now the average source current 
and the chemical we're going to be using the power balance. Now for that we can say the power in must be equal to power out when everything is ideal. That means that source current, average value of that one, times the DC voltage uh, source is equal to the power absorbed by the load. Now we know what the power absorbed by the load is, we know the VDC, so just the values, and we get now 4.41 amps. THT for the load voltage, that is given by this expression. You see here that we need the RMS load voltage. We also need the RMS value of the first uh, harmonic of the load voltage. So, and this, we, for that we need the amplitude of the harmonics of the load voltage. And those are given by this expression. You, again, using Fourier series, so we leave the details out. And you see here the N. And that n is an odd number, so it will be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, etc. So we only need actually for n is 1. And then the, the, the deal is done because we already know the VO RMS. So we can say for n is 1, we have that this expression will be then 4 times 100 over 1 times pi. So it will be then 400 over pi volts. But we also need to convert that to RMS. So that means we only need to divide by the square root of 2 because this is a pure sine wave frequency component. It will give you approximately 90.03 volts. Now we have now sufficient information to calculate this THT for load voltage and that is given here and it will be then 0.483 approximately or 48.3 percent. And this was exactly the same as for the resistive load so that doesn't change because the load voltage across this uh, load will not change because we only measure across the load time which is parallel. So this will not be a surprise actually. The surprise will be actually for the load current and that is the improvement also for this case. And again, the similar expression. We have here the IO RMS squared minus the first harmonic RMS squared divided by the first harmonic RMS squared. And then everything in the square root. So again, we need this, but we also need the first harmonic. Again, amplitude of the first harmonic of load current are given by this. This is just using Ohm's law. But in here we need the impedance and that is given by this expression. We have the square root of the R squared plus the part which is the imaginary part which is due to that inductor. And you see here the omega zero which is our fundamental frequency which is in this case the switch of frequency times 2 pi which is 120 pi radians per second. Okay now if we now take this formula and use also the expression for the VON for the N terms and take it here in the formula, you get now this expression and now rewrite this in a much nicer way, we have this expression. Now rewriting is in more detail and also substitute the value of VDC, the resistor and also the omega zero and L. Just leave the N as the parameter, we have this expression. And then also this one because you take, can also simplify this part and also this will be just 400. So you have actually your simplified version of your expression for the components of the load current. Now let's then do them for NS1. We have then this and that will give you 9.266 amps. And at RMS value just divide this by the square root of 2 again because this is a pure sine wave component that will give you 6.552 amps. In this case we have the surface information because we know that this, the RMS value of the load current is known. We also know the first harmonic of the uh, uh, load current in RMS value, so we have actually sufficient information. But when we look at it in more detail, that will be handy. Again, this is for odd values, and this is also for odd values, and also this is what we have seen. We can say that we can develop a table, and this is nice to see what how the values of the load voltage and also the load current are uh, or developing, because this is now the N, which is our harmonics index. N is one, three, five, seven. 911 so of course it goes up to infinity but what you see is the frequency goes up by 60 here in this case this is now 180 and then 300 and then 420 etc you see here the load voltage component for the first harmonic which is 127.3 volts this is just of course the peak value when you go now to the rms this is now the 90.03 volts this is what we also have calculated before in order to calculate the THD for the load voltage. This impedance is calculated by putting here 1 and 120 pi for the omega 0 and here 0 0.025 because that was a 25 mini Henry's. 
and a quantity squared and then take the square root of this uh, expression here that will give you 13.74 and again you repeat the process for n is 3, 5, 7 etc. You do that actually also for this one by using this formula so v o n use this formula and you get now this one and then from here this column to that column is just divide by square root of 2 each term here. The ION here which are the harmonic components of the load current is pretty straightforward using Ohm's law again using this formula so you do VON over the ZN that will give you this one. Now this is now interesting because we also have calculated this one you cannot divide by the square root of 2 you get this and similar form you get now the values here but instead of looking at the calculations like so you can also see how the values are evolving because this is a 127.3 but this goes down this goes even more down so actually when you increase in order or in harmonics you go down in the load voltage components this is in the reverse case true for the impedance Impo Im impedance goes up when the harmonic number goes up and since the value or the formula is given as VON over the impedance so if this is going down but this is going up that means the current will go down but it will go down even faster and the RMS value is also going faster so what you see is that the first harmonic is actually the highest and then the third harmonic is there but also down, going down and almost to 0.08 amps RMS so this is pretty small compared to the first harmonic now when you take this part for the load voltage and also this part for the load current and put it in this formulas we know that that will give you 100 exactly if you take this up to the limit to uh, infinity and also the RMS load current now when you now take the values here for the THT for the current we get this uh, which is done 0 0.1675 which is done 16.75 percent Okay, we have now the necessary uh, unknown calculations here done. Let's also look at the simulations. This is the circuit in the MATLAB Simulink. You see here the resistive and the resistor and the inductor series combination. This is the DC voltage source. These are the four switches again. And the switches S1 here and S1 here. That means actually those are on when the uh, first half of the uh, double P PWM is there. And the second half of the PWM is there then the S2 and S2 so these two switches are on now let's go one by one the first one is RMS load current which is 6.6343 uh, amps as we have calculated so that's checked RMS load voltage is 100 volts so that's also what we have calculated we see here the source code of 4.413 close to what we have we see here the THD of the load voltage which is 0.4834 close to what we have we also here have the THD of the load current which is 0 0.1677 so pretty close to what we have so we can say this is all checked let's also look at the waveforms these are the waveforms the red one is for the source current the green one is for the load current and for the yellow one is the load voltage so the yellow, yellow one is actually pretty uh, simple it is 100 for the first half of the period minus 100 for the second half of the period you see here for the load current that it is in, indeed is charging and discharging as we have uh, discussed in the beginning and you see here the source current going up and down in this fashion again looking at the graph for pink one but again look, uh, remember that this is only valid for the steady state so it starts at the origin but when you look at the steady state it must actually start here and then go up and what you also see is that we have calculated IO minimum and IO maximum the first label labels here for the load current that this is first label you can see that here is minus 9.29 let's say minus 9.3 amps and the label 2 is 9.3 plus 9.31 amps approximately that means this is in agreement with what we have calculated because we have calculated IO maximum and IO minimum was equal to each other in an inverse there was 9.31 so this is again verified all right this was our example considering the square wave inverting having a series RL load don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video. Take care.